This talk's going to be about the harmony method for socialist economic planning that we originally developed around 1989-90. In the previous talk, I described the package that I'd released as open source software on GitHub that you could use for doing uh, macroeconomic planning using input-output tables. However, that used LPSolve, an open source linear programming package, which is essentially Kantorovich's method. And this has certain restrictions. I'm going to explain those restrictions first, and then I'll get on to talking about the, the harmony method. The first thing you have to grasp is that algorithms can be measured in terms of their complexity. And the complexity of an algorithm basically defines how long the algorithm takes to complete its task as a function of the problem size. And there are various complexity classes which grow increasingly harder. I'm only focusing on the easiest of them here. A constant time algorithm would be one which gave the same answer irrespective of the size of the amount of data that it was working on. That's unusually good. More commonly would be a, a linear algorithm, which would take an amount of time proportional to the amount of data. So if you wanted, for example, to total up the scores of um, students in a class, that's a linear time algorithm since you run through all the students and add the, the numbers together and the time it takes depends on the number of students. There are various more complicated classes than that, the best of which is the, the log linear class, where an algorithm takes a time which is proportional to both the number of items you have and the logarithm of the number of items best methods of sorting, for example, um, are log, linear, log linear. The next stage up would be polynomial algorithms, where the time taken is a fixed power of the amount of data you've got. So it might grow as the square of the number of items you have or as the cube of the number of items. In Talking about algorithmic complexity, we use what's known as big O notation, where you put a big O in front of the, the formula for the, the power of n, or the formula in n, which gives the running time. This was invented by Newth, this big O notation. The next level up would be an exponential uh, running time, where it grows as e to the n, and that this is a pretty poor performance and generally exponential runtime algorithms are intractable for anything but the smallest sizes. If you're going to do economic planning, clearly it's got to be tractable. And if you're going to plan on a national scale, you can't take longer to prepare the plan than you're actually going to do to do the work that's being planned. So tractability is important. You might have a method that works fine for planning a hundred industries or a thousand industries, but which becomes prohibitively slow when you increase it to, to a million industries or a million products. What about the LPSolve package whose planning application I demonstrated earlier? Well, if you run it, and this is running the uh, n-year plan package that are released on GitHub, you find that if along the x-axis we show the number of industries we're planning, on the y-axis we show the number of seconds it takes to plan them, and this is planning one, one year ahead, this is planning two years ahead, this is planning five years ahead. What we see is that these form straight lines on a log-log plot, 
and if you have something which is a straight line on a log log plot it's basically it's a polynomial function and the order of the polynomial is given by the slope and if we plot or compute the regression we find that these things are all of order roughly three so LP solve when applied to economic planning has complexity n to the 3, n cubed. That doesn't sound too bad because I mean our times here are only going up to 100 seconds. That's quite tractable and that's a tiny wee PC, a tiny wee Odroid uh, chip which is about the same scale as a Raspberry Pi so it's not a powerful computer. But if we start applying this to larger plans it rapidly becomes intractable. So 500 industries using those timings. I could do a one-year plan in a quarter of an hour. That's how it's still okay. 17 hours for a five-year plan? Well, that would not be unreasonable um, for a, a government ministry planning and an, a, a, doing a macroeconomic plan of the economy. They could easily afford to, to spend a day computing it. However, as you start to disaggregate further and you want to control more industries in your planning regulations, say if you want to go up to a few thousand industries as GOS plan wanted to, well, LP solve techniques for a five-year plan would take two years. At this point, it's all already getting intractable. You, you, you can't afford to spend that time preparing your plan. If you went up to 50,000 industries, we find we're, we're taking 2,400 years to prepare a five-year plan, which rather defeats the point. So clearly you need something that is a lot better than order n to the 3. You need something which is linear or log-linear. In our book Towards a New Socialism, we described such a near linear algorithm. It was originally developed about 1989 and I'd long since lost the source code or and even if I had it it would have run on uh, computers which no longer exist. I've released a new version of it written in uh, Java on GitHub. If you go to the um, N year plan uh, GitHub site and go down into the plan code directory you will see the new program is uh, in the planning subdirectory and it's called N Year Harmony. The pr previous plan was called N Year Plan dot, uh, Java. N Year Harmony takes exactly the same set of parameters, same set of input output tables as the original program used so you can easily shift to it. And there are a set of additional classes which I've released to, to deal with it. There is the harmonizer class which does the actual solving and the a, a class to handle joint production. I'll explain why joint production is needed later. Why can we be confident that log linear solutions to this problem do exist? Well, given that any explicit calculation or algorithm that humans can do can also in principle be done by computers, and given also the complexity order of an algorithm is no different whether people do it by hand or a computer does it, it follows that the existence of a functioning market economy is proof that low complexity coordinations exist because in the market economy until very recently or until the late 20th century the calculations were done by hand and it's clearly not the case that market economies depend on an algorithm of order n to the 3 or if they did, they'd never be able to produce and coordinate the production of the hundreds of millions of products that Amazon actually has on sale. 
So we know that such algorithms of low complexity exist. The Harmony algorithm, which, as I say, was originally published in the late 80s, is of order n log n. It draws on ideas from marginalist economics and from neural nets to derive an iterative surface planning technique. And we've previously published results to show that it was of n log n complexity for single um, year plans. The issue that I never attempted to address back in the late 80s, early 90s, was whether or not it would work with n log n complexity for multi-year plans. Now that's something that I've now done and confirmed that it retains the same nice complexity properties. The point about the harmony function is that it's a socialist utility function. It's designed to mimic the principle that you have positive but diminishing marginal social utility as you produce more of a good. What you want is a mathematical function whose value rises as planned fulfillment approaches, but which rewards over-fulfillment of the plan less than it punishes under-fulfillment of the plan. Here is a plot of the shape of the harmony function as I use it in my current version of the software. I'm assuming that we have a planned target of producing two units of something. It could be two million units or two hundred thousand units, but it's two of something. And the harmony is zero when you exactly hit the plan. And it goes negative when there's a planned shortfall. So if you're only producing 1.8 units, it's down here, goes down to like minus a half when you're producing 1.2 units. On the other hand, it increases more slowly if you overfulfill the plan. The point being that it's worse for society if you have a serious shortage of something than a big surplus of something, than the gain you get from having a big surplus. Mathematically, I use a fu function of the form um, s minus s squared upon 2 for if the scale of production is below the planned target and log of the scale plus 1 if it's above the planned target, where s is either the surplus or the scale of production and it's given by the net output minus the target over the target. And that is it's the proportional amount by which the plan has been exceeded by each industry. Why do I use this? Well, for one reason, it's to give a more flexible plan target than Kantorovich's approach, which specified exact proportionality between all outputs. That may not always be achievable. It may be possible to over-fulfill the plan more for some products than others, and that may be worth doing. Secondly, because the function has a continuous first derivative, it allows us to use Newton's approximation method for functions. And this allows us rapidly to bring all the industries into approximate alignment with the planned target. I'm going, just going to run through how Newton's approximation method works here. So we start out with some scale of output and a planned target, and here's our harmony axis. We'll draw in the, the harmony function, and as before, it's zero when we exactly hit the, the, the plan. Now suppose our starting position has one industry A that exceeds the plan and another industry B that falls short of its plan target. So industry B will have a sharply negative harmony. Industry A will have a slightly positive harmony. And 
This is clearly a bad use of resources, so we want to shrink industry A and expand industry B. But by how much? Well, the Newton method for approximating a function makes use of the derivatives. Uh, and if we know the derivative at A, we can draw a line to see where it will intersect the mean. And if we know the derivative at B, we can draw a line to see where it will intersect the mean. And the basic Newton method means we move some proportion of that distance towards the intercept. And we do that repeatedly. And, we, and by doing that, we'll converge on the interception point. Now, I'm, for example, here I'm saying, let us um, let us assume that I moved all the way to the intercept line. Well, I would have overshot. I'd have ended up drastically reducing the uh, harmony of A. So I don't want to move that far. So how about moving half the way? Well, that would take me to here. Industry A would shrink its production level to here if I attempted to move half the way to the intercept. The net effect of that, if both of them moved half the way to the intercept, is that A and B would move to new points on the harmony function. And there would be a new mean, but they would be closer to the new mean than they were to the original mean, which means that we're bringing the output into uh, the right ratios that are, are demanded by the plan. The problem is that if we just do this, we converge on an output mix that meets the plan target ratios, but it will be at a low harmony point because given the shape of the harmony function, the reductions that we carry out in the high harmony industries will be greater than the increases we carry out in the low harmony industries. This means we need some other way of moving the mean position up along the harmony function towards the plan target and hopefully succeeding it. Well, in a capitalist economy, the rate of profit is supposed to act as an indicator to shift resources towards sectors where they'll be more useful and produce a higher rate of return. In the planning anal analog, what we want to do is to shift resources to the branches of production where the marginal harmony gain is greatest. Essentially, we use the derivative of the harmony function for each product as a shadow price and compute a rate of return for each technique. And we expand each industry in proportion to its harmony gain rate. If we assume GJ is, or GI is the gain rate of industry I, uh, in what I do in what follows. Problem is that this can potentially lead to instabilities if you just get your planning algorithm to work this way. If industries are, are making and have a negative harmony gain, if under current circumstances they are making a loss in capitalist terms, it could lead to industries being set to have a negative rate of production, which is, is meaningless. So you don't want that ever to happen. You want the lower limit of the level of production of any industry to be zero. Well, there's a, a standard technique in neural nets that you use when you're, you're doing approximations, which you want to be kept within the limits zero and one, for example, or in in this case, um, zero, zero plus one minus one, you put it through what's called a sigmoid function, an S-shaped function, so that as you vary this, this one is clamped to between, the y-axis is clamped between minus one plus one. 
um, and given a sigmoid function like that, I can adjust the output of the ith industry to be its previous rate level of output times one plus the gain rate here, the clamped gain rate. And again, I, I apply a couple of tuning constants, phi psi here, which adjust the, the rates to be less than one, so it doesn't move very rapidly. I tend to select these constants at around 0.2 or 0.15. Now, does this work? Yes, it works very well. Here are the results I get for planning industries or economies of different sizes or different degrees of disaggregation um, with the harmony algorithm as opposed to using linear programming. These rapidly rising curves here are applying linear programming to one year planning, two year planning, five year planning. I haven't bothered drawing the curve because it just goes off the screen. Now, the harmony algorithm, one year planning, five year planning. Note that this is a log curve so that between there and there is a factor of about 500 in performance times. That's between a five-year plan for 300 industries and a one-year plan for 300 industries using linear programming. In general, the slope of these curves is close to one. Instead of being close to three, which is what you get for um, an order n to the third algorithm. This is close to being a linear algorithm. I don't assume it's really linear. It's more likely to be log linear. But over this range of data points, it's hard to pick out the difference between a log linear and a linear algorithm. So um, for the moment, it's pretty close to linear. What does this mean? It indicates just with, I ran that using two CPU cores. This indicates that a using the harmony algorithm, you could solve a plan for 50,000 industries over five years in under 10 minutes. That's just with a, a microprocessor using two cores, not a powerful supercomputer. And that compares very favorably with the 2,400 years it would have taken to solve the same thing using LP solve. There are restrictions. The package I've written at the moment requires you to specify the data in IO table format. I did that to be compatible with the previous release, but for large problems, this would be impractical. A 50,000 uh, sector I.O. table would occupy a prohibitive amount of disk space. And uh, if you push the, the size of the I.O. tables up, the Java system falls over as it reads the files in. It doesn't fall over to solve the problem. It just falls over reading the very large files. A viewer pointed out that for large plans, you would need to supply the data in relational database form and read it in sequentially. That's quite correct. Extensions would be possible to parallelize it. The nature of the algorithm is such that it lends itself very well to massive data parallelism. Um, but producing a production quality package for detailed national plans is, is clearly not something that's worth my while doing as a, an amateur. Um, it'd be easy to do for software teams at a supercomputer center and even using Java code of the uh, classes that I've provided, it would, with relatively little difficulty, be possible to parallelize these and run them in some kind of parallel harness. Um, some kind of map produce harness.